The Mate 20 Pro was a brilliant camera phone and one that performed well enough for me to crown it the best camera phone of 2018. Now the P30 Pro is here with hardware that seems straight out of a sci-fi movie. Let's see whether they have improved and whether this is one that manages to take things to a whole new level. This is Sandeep from Revitalis and you're watching the camera review of the Huawei P30 Pro. This video is brought to you by Zest Money. Visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to buy your favorite smartphone. It's an entirely digital process with high approval rates, seamless EMI payments and even zero pre-closure charges. But the best part of all is the 0% interest on most merchants and you don't even need a credit card or a credit score either. The camera setup is quite similar to what you find on a Mi 20 Pro in terms of versatility but it takes the same to a whole new level. For starters, it now features 4 cameras instead of 3 and the additional camera being a time of flight sensor for depth information that sits as a separate unit below the flash. The primary camera is a 40 megapixel sensor with 1 by 1.7 sensor size, but one that has a wider f1.6 aperture. It also has a new red, yellow, yellow, blue subpixel arrangement, and the focal length at 27mm and megapixel count are the same as the Mate 20 Pro, but there's OIS as well now, and the telephoto camera has received a huge upgrade in terms of focal length. It's gone from a 3x lens to a 5x lens with 125mm focal length, f3.4 aperture, and OIS. It's a periscope lens which is how Huawei have managed the compact form factor as it uses a prism to refract the light onto the sensor at 90 degrees. The sensor has 1.22 micron pixel size and a resolution of 8 megapixel. The last sensor used is an ultra wide angle camera with 20 megapixels of resolution, 1 by 2.7 in sensor size and f2.2 aperture. The primary camera captures default photos in 10 megapixel resolution with pixel binning. The image quality is amazing and one of the best on any phone currently. It has great contrast, high dynamic range as well as excellent sharpness and detail. You can also turn on the AI mode which as we noted on the Mate 20 Pro is more laid back unlike the overpowering AI mode on the P20 Pro. You can also capture images in 40 megapixel mode as well if you want, but apart from having larger file sizes you really don't get any benefit from increase in sharpness or detail. Shutter speed is quick too and so is the focus and it also does a good job at eliminating handshake thanks to OIS and EIS. The processing on photos is more natural compared to some of its predecessors, but with AI turned on, it can be a bit more saturated than normal. The ultra-wide angle camera has great image quality with natural colors as well as good dynamic range. It's also sharp and has good detailing, although it isn't as good as the main camera in any of these parameters. It's also not as wide as some of the other offerings on the market such as the S10 Plus ultra-wide angle camera, but still fairly wide enough to create some dramatic looking shots. It captures in 20 megapixel resolution by default, but using night mode or some special mode will downsize it to 10 megapixels. The only real issue I found with the ultra wide angle camera is that it has vignetting, which is fairly evident in well lit conditions. It can be corrected in post processing, but is something still worth mentioning. The ultra wide angle camera can also focus up close, and there's a super macro mode for it. The super macro mode gives you both options for 1x and super wide. I believe that it used the regular camera for 1x, but as Airshot from Mr. Phone rightly pointed out, it uses the ultra wide angle camera itself for both. Thanks to Airshot for clarifying that and he used the age old technique of covering the lens and elimination to identify which sensor was being used. But what's even more stunning is the fact that the 5x camera captures even better macro shots. It allows you to go surprisingly close to the object or subject and you can get some stunning results as you can see here. So you don't really need to use the super macro mode, just switch to 5x or 10x and capture it. In terms of telephoto capabilities, the Huawei P30 Pro is insane. It's not something that you would imagine was possible on a phone, but it is. At 5x, the quality is amazing and on par with the primary camera under good lighting conditions. There's good sharpness and detail as well as good dynamic range and colors. This has also got to do with the fact that the pixel size is larger at 1.22 micron. All photos using zoom are captured at 10 megapixel resolution even though the 5x sensor has 8 megapixels of resolution. We are not quite sure why it is exactly, but it's probably got to do with the fact that the main camera also captures a 10 megapixel by default, so they wanted consistency, or both work in tandem always to create the photo, or both. The stabilization works extremely well in ensuring a stable shot, and you can actually see it kick in in the viewfinder how it becomes much more stable as it takes a second to get enabled once you switch cameras. You can also get great shots at 10x zoom which is hybrid with both optical and digital zoom, but the optimization is really good and one that definitely creates a very usable image. 
Cropping in 2x on the 5x zoom photo won't give you as good a shot as directly shooting in 10x, so shoot in 10x when needed if you want the best output and I usually suggest cropping in later always, but in this case it doesn't hold true. You can shoot anywhere between 1x and 5x as well, but you have to move the slider manually to zoom and get the desired zoom instead of hitting the toggle. This too involves digital processing and some math work between the primary and telephoto cameras, but the results are still very usable and good. On the longer end of the zoom range you can have up to 50x zoom which is pretty unusable in terms of the quality, but it can still capture it. This probably makes the P30 Pro the ideal spy cam I guess, but to be honest it offers a few practical benefits as well. For example I was at an airport with my son and I had to look at the screen to see the boarding status since the airport didn't have any announcements over the mic. He was sleeping on my lap and I didn't want to wake him up by getting up and walking to a screen which was fairly far away. Rather all I had to use was the 10x zoom on the P30 Pro and I was able to read what's on screen. Of course that's just a one-off case, but I'm sure there'll be many such cases where the P30 Pro does come in handy. There's also the argument that such a capable camera setup with zoom can be misused, but then again that's the case with any piece of technology, and if we stop at that we can never grow at all. But what you get from the P30 Pro is insane zoom that feels like it's taken from CSI or some sci-fi movie where the camera can just zoom and zoom and keep zooming. As usual for bokeh and blur effect images you are presented with two options, a portrait mode for human and aperture mode for everything else. Note that with AI turned on the camera can automatically enable the portrait mode for humans or dogs or anything it feels needs a portrait mode, but in case you don't want to use the AI and want to do it manually, these are your options. Aperture mode also allows you to readjust focus and play around with the virtual aperture after capturing the photo which changes the apparent depth of field as well. The edge detection is better than before, but still not perfect as there's slight runoff onto the portion in focus. However, the sharpness on the portion in focus has also been improved and so have the details. This could be attributed to use of time of flight sensor as opposed to just a depth map created by the cameras. Overall it's one of the better cameras but not the absolute best as I still think the pixel nails it in terms of portraits. You can only use the aperture and portrait modes at 1x, 2x or 3x modes, the latter two of which are using digital zoom and computation to get the image while there's no interpolation or zoom happening at 1x. The low light imaging is the single most impressive thing on this phone apart from the 5x telephoto periscope camera. This is a result of having a red yellow yellow blue camera sensor as opposed to the red green green blue sensor used on most smartphones including the Mate 20 Pro and P20 Pro. While most of the other specs of his primary sensor are similar and few changes such as the larger aperture speak for itself as it allows more light into the camera at any given moment, the sub pixel arrangement isn't as simple. What an RYYB sensor does compared to the RGGB sensor is replace the green subpixels with yellow ones which should give it much better low light capabilities as it claims to capture 40% more light and boy does it deliver. These images captured in the default auto mode on the P30 Pro are in fact much better than the results that you would get from the night mode on the Pixel 3 XL and that is saying a lot considering how the Mate 20 Pro and Pixel 3 XL were neck and neck when it came to low light capabilities in our tests that we performed late last year. Another reason for this amazing performance is the ability to shoot at very high ISO levels without introducing much noise into the frame. The P30 Pro can go as high as ISO 409600 technically, but practically speaking, even at ISO 25000, it doesn't really affect it that much, but it does allow for a much faster shutter speed and as a result avoids issues such as motion blurring or handshakes and also avoids the need to use a tripod. If the default auto mode images aren't good enough for you, you can choose the night mode which takes even more impressive images but requires some waiting as it captures multiple images with different exposure levels and stacks them together to create a really impressive output. Thanks to superior optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization which together Huawei terms as AIS, the images are also very sharp and free from shakes or movement. You can also shoot at very high ISO levels in the pro mode but the shutter speed is fixed in those. Night mode by the way is a great tool even in well lit conditions where you get much improved dynamic range and much better photos especially in those challenging lighting conditions where the default mode isn't able to keep up. You can capture images in RAW using the Pro mode and you can also process them to get some amazing results. But unlike the Nokia 9 PureView that we did review earlier, the JPEGs and default camera processing is good. So unless you're an absolute pro or really want to process the images yourself for full control, you don't have to as the JPEGs do give you good quality output. Huawei got rid of the monochrome camera with the Mate 20 Pro since the primary sensor is rightly so advanced that it doesn't need a monochrome sensor's help anymore and that holds even more true with the P30 Pro thanks to the RYYB setup. 
but it still does have a monochrome mode that captures some great results and you can also use the zoom within it and even capture it in raw mode using pro mode or aperture or portrait modes. Here are some results using it and probably my favorite of the bunch is this photo which was shot at 5x zoom. Another mode which I can't skip talking about is the light painting mode which stacks images to give you various effects such as silky water or light rails. This works even in well-lit conditions which otherwise using just a long exposure, say to capture a waterfall on a well-lit day, would give an overexposed frame and you'd actually need an ND filter to get a usable photo. But this eliminates the need for that although you do need to have a solid surface or tripod to get the effect which would otherwise cause issues in terms of stacking and give soft or blurry images. The front facing camera is a 32 megapixel f2 unit. Huawei cameras at the front in the past year have been disappointing due to some limitations. Those are mainly due to a not so good dynamic range and soft images which is also attributed to the fixed focus lens. Dynamic range has been sorted to a large extent this time around and even the images are sharper and contain more detail than ever before. But sadly it's still a fixed focus camera so I wouldn't rate it very high on the selfie index. The images are good but not great. And if selfies are the primary camera use case for you, then you should look elsewhere. But for an occasional snap, this does so well. Although the focal length makes the field of view a bit tight for large groups and you should consider the Pixel 3 devices in that case. In terms of video, the P30 Pro captures up to 4K 30fps videos with EIS and the quality is much better than its bitrate suggests. Bitrate holds around 35 to 40 megabits per second but there's plenty of detail and sharpness. The biggest improvement I see now is that the colors are much more natural looking than its predecessors. You can choose between the ultra wide angle camera, the regular camera or 5x telephoto camera for shooting videos. You can also shoot at 10x but the quality dips as there is digital zoom involved. But it's still optimized so it's better than any other device even at that focal length. You also have several other video recording options such as 1080p 60fps mode which can only be used with the main camera or ultra wide angle camera. The 1080p mode also gives you the option to shoot at 21 to 9 aspect ratio and video shot at 1080p also have similarly good dynamic range and colors albeit with lower resolution compared to 4K. The most impressive part of the P30 Pro is the ability to take some amazingly stable footage with the 5x zoom camera and Huawei seems to be turning up the EIS in this mode along with OIS to get such stable footage. The EIS and OIS are good on regular mode too but not as aggressive which it doesn't need to be considering the wide field of view. Ultra wide angle videos have lesser dynamic range and sharpness compared to the other two cameras but it's still not bad for most situations and it still does look good. The ultra wide angle camera only has electronic image stabilization as well but the field of view is quite wide and so shakes aren't as apparent anyway so the EIS is good enough. You also get special modes for videos such as selective color which works really well in real time with the subject thanks to a dual neural processing unit. It also works with multiple subjects but can be a bit erratic. Still there's an option that most of the phones on the market don't have and you can also go for a portrait video of sorts where everything else apart from the subjects are blurred out. The front facing camera videos can be recorded at a maximum resolution of 1080p with EIS and the footage is stable and is sharp and detailed as well. The audio is mono though and isn't as good as the video in terms of quality. So I'm actually here in Switzerland and uh, I'm taking a look at the P30 Pro from Huawei, how it performs in terms of camera etc. And I have to say I'm absolutely blown away by the camera so far. It's probably the most versatile camera setup I've seen on any smartphone till date. Uh, probably the Pixel is the closest competitor it has. But I'm still blown away by the P30 Pro and what it can achieve. Uh, I've been taking some samples, videos etc. And uh, hopefully this comes out into a full flesh travelogue of sorts that you can use to kind of understand the capabilities of the P30 Pro itself. Slow motion videos can be captured at a maximum of 960fps to 720p but it has a buffer capacity that will only allow it to shoot for a fraction of a second. Nonetheless that's good enough considering how much slower it is in comparison to real life and you also get really slow and long videos ranging from 6 to 10 seconds. You can also shoot at 1080p 120fps or 720p 240fps. One feature that isn't currently available but I'm looking forward to is dual view video. Basically, it allows a side-by-side -side video framing with feeds coming in from both the ultra-wide angle or regular camera and the telephoto camera. This isn't available yet unfortunately, so I couldn't try it out, but it does seem promising for sure. The only downside I can say about the camera UI is that there are way too many options for the average consumer to master. Most people just take photos in whatever default mode the camera presents to them and at max may just toggle the HDR mode on or off apart from switching between various cameras. 
However, then again, considering how this is a high-end camera phone, most people using this phone would likely be interested in photography or already know how to use it, and it doesn't matter as much to them. For everyone else, the auto mode works well. The Huawei P30 Pro is an absolute beast of a camera phone. Even with the Mate 20 Pro, which I call the best camera phone of 2018, I would have still picked the Pixel 3 XL as my personal camera phone. But with the P30 Pro, I would say that Huawei has come so far that apart from portraits or photos involving humans, everything else be it photo or video is superior and this makes it the best camera phone currently on the market for me. It is the absolute most versatile and capable camera phone that you can purchase right now and the odds are when this review unit goes back later this week, I'll be buying one for myself. If you're looking for a great camera phone with no price limit, then this is the one to go for. The purchase link is in the description in case you're interested and we'll also be bringing you a camera comparison between the Nokia 9 Pure View and P30 Pro very soon, so please do stay tuned for that. Please do hit the subscribe button and share this video if you liked it. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next one. Thanks for watching this video, make sure you visit zestmoney.in and avail instant loans to purchase your dream products, be it a smartphone, electronics, furniture and more across Flipkart, Amazon and more than 100 other partners.